that I serve a God when he gets me out of a situation when he gets me out of a circumstance he doesn't only do it one time but I don't know about you but in my case he's done it over and over again because that's the type of God that we serve nobody nobody Nobody, 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 I said nobody, 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 hey, nobody, Way maker, 
miracle work. I promise He died in the darkness. My God, but that is for you. Oh, He's a way maker. Way maker, miracle work. I promise He died in the darkness. My God, but that is for you. That is who you are. 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 Oh, way back, way back, a miracle work. I promise He's a light in the darkness. That is who you are. Oh, way Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. A little more contemporary. Waymaker, waymaker, promise keeper. My God. That is who you are. Y'all sound so good this morning. Yeah, way maker, way maker, promise keeper. My God, that is who you are. Oh, way maker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. 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 Now we went back, in some instances, a hundred years. That song's probably about three or four years old. But he's the same God. Somebody say, he's the same God. He's the same God. Oh, glory, he's a way maker, miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you so kindly, in this flow, i got to share this word. I'm going to ask you so kindly, stay to the end of service. We'll raise offering after the message. We'll have altar call. We'll raise offering after the message, and we'll have altar call. But I'm pleading with you to stay to the end of the service. I need to share this word with you while it is fresh in my spirit. In the name of the Lord, glory to God. You know why I'm doing this? I'm going to get my Bible real quick, my, my printed Bible, if you would, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. While this is fresh in my spirit, I want to share this with you. Last week, we, we started this message in the name of the Lord, and I'm just feeling if I do something else in the name of the Lord, we'll break the flow in the name of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit wants us to be in his divine will in the name of the Lord, and I think it may take one more visitation of this scripture before I, I finish it, but I'm going to make an attempt to, to preach a little bit more of it in the name of the Lord. Stand with your Bible, your iPad, your, your phone. So good to be in the house of worship. How many feel better than they did when they first came in? You should feel a little bit better in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. A lot to cover here, but... I'm going to do the best I can. Go to Joshua, the sixth chapter. On Wednesday, we covered one verse. I expounded on verse two. I'm going to move this a little bit further. Hallelujah. You bring your soul park here? Okay, I brought mine too. I don't know if I'll have enough air. I don't even know if we'll get to the blast yet. Take, I want you to take some time and I want you to digest this era of scripture like never before. You know, in my preachment of it is 
it's going to be somewhat redundant because I want you to understand it like you've never understood it before. I just don't want it to be a wall that falls. A wall. I want it to. I want to know that you are integrated. You are. You are intimately involved in following God's direction for the wall in your life to come down. Joshua six and one says, "Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out." And none came in. I told you last week, you have a reputation with the enemy. The enemy knows the battles that you have already won. Oh, glory to God. You need to praise the Lord right now. Sometimes you have to remind the, the enemy what the Lord has already brought you through. Don't be so quick to give up and give in. Jericho was shut up, none went out, none came in, and the Lord said, somebody say, and the Lord said, Joshua, see, take a look, I have given unto, into thine hand Jericho, the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. I'm going to give you the city, I'm going to give you the king, I'm going to give you the soldiers. All ye shall compass the city. Everybody say all. all. All ye men of war and go round about the city once. Thus shall thou do six days and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. Hold up that ram's horn. This might have been what it looked like what they played. It's a ram's horn. See, Kia has a very fancy one back there. She got a silver plated ram's horn. With, with some other stuff on it. But that's what it might have looked like. It says, In the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. Verse 5, And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. Everybody say, great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat. People shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant. Now the Ark of the Covenant is involved. When the presence of God gets involved, God is about to do something great. Oh, glory to God. Tell, tell your neighbor, ain't nothing like the presence of God. Well, the Ark is involved now. The Ark is involved and let the seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord and he said unto the people pass on and pass the city and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord and it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord Followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets, and the re reward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye Glory to God, it's so much here. Well, let me cut to the chase just a little bit here. I guess I got to keep reading so we get the context. Twelfth verse, and Joshua rose early in the morning and the priest took up the ark of the Lord and the seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets and the armed men went before them but the reward came after the ark of the Lord and the priests going on and blowing with trumpets. They did this on the second day and they did it until the seventh day. The 16th verse says, and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets. On the seventh day, they would go around seven times. And the, Joshua gives the command, says unto the people, shout for the Lord hath given you the city. Bible lets us know 
that when they shouted that the wall fell down flat in verse 20. Tell your neighbor, this wall must fall. You may be seated. Give me a few moments. Give me a few moments. Let me tell you, don't, you don't want to miss none of this message because this is a message that's going to take you over and take you through. Oh, glory to God. As I told you last week, are you ready to walk this one out? Because the children of Israel were going to have to walk around this wall one time for six days, seven times on the seventh day. And sometimes we feel that when we are facing our enemies, when we have to face our enemies, we, we really feel like we want to fight. But the Lord wants us to walk. He wanted Israel to march around the Jericho wall and they were going to give the Lord an extraordinary response. It was going to be the blast of the trumpets that were carried by the seven priests. It was going to be a shout from the people. It was going to be a battle cry, but they were not going to have to fight because we know that the scripture tells us that the battle is not ours, but the battle belongs to God. We have to know that God always has a strategy when it comes to to the enemy. We, we have to overcome things that are getting in our way, but, but sometimes we have to realize that we cannot go through struggles emotionally all the time, but how many know you have to hear the voice of the Lord God? We find that Joshua is listening to God and he tells him to see. The Lord wants us to see us winning. He wants us to see our victory already being won. You have to realize that sometimes God's methods, I think some of you can relate to this, that sometimes God's methods are illogical. Sometimes God's messages, methods to us don't make any sense. But I'm reminded of what King Solomon says. He says, trust in the Lord in Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. It's not what you know, it's what God knows. Oh, glory to God. It's what not what we can figure out. It's what, it's what God is going to do. And then the scripture goes on to say, in all thy ways acknowledge him in the name of the Lord. The time when you're facing the enemy is the best time to pray. It is the best time to call on God. It's the best time to cup your spiritual ear and say, Lord, speak to me so that I can hear clearly the instructions that you would have for me. The fact of the matter is we're living in a time in the name of the Lord where people are all over the place, listening to all kinds of voices. But I believe that Joshua learned from his predecessor that he was to listen to the voice of of the Almighty God. So Solomon goes on to say, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. Let me tell you, when you go around in circles, you're listening to too many voices. When you're going around in circles, there's too many people in your ear. But how many know it's sometimes a time in your life where you have to shut down the noise. Oh, glory to God. You have to, you have to be in your prayer closet with noise-canceling ears. Talked to you some months ago, some maybe some years ago, about noise canceling headphones. Anybody got any of those? You know, you got headphones where, where you got the headphones on, but you can't hear the activity around you. You can't hear the buzz. See, when sometimes when God gives you a vision, you can't hear everybody else's voice. But we find here that they were preparing themselves to cry in the name of the Lord with an intense shout. But Joshua gave the instructions to the people and there is nowhere in scripture where it says that the people rebelled against Joshua. Oh glory to God. He told them, God told them to march around seven times but he really didn't share it with the people but they responded and Joshua gave the instruction what God was going to do and the instruction was laced with we've already won this. How many use that phrase I got this? Come on. Anybody use that phrase at least once in your life? I got this. Well, God is saying that to us right now. He's saying with our own personal walls, I got this. But, but you must be intricately involved in what God is about to do. See, many times we think that God is going to do all the work. How many know that God could have took the wall down by himself? But he wants us to be involved. That's how he gets the glory out of our lives. God got the glory out of this because of the obedience of God's people. And he was going to use collective praise, hallelujah, to bring them out. And we have to be mindful that a collective praise will perform a miracle in the natural 
realm so that our faith is stimulated in the spiritual realm. How many know that God has to have a confrontation with your natural and say, I'm in control of the natural, but it is spiritual when you respond to my voice, even when it doesn't make sense. Joshua didn't delay. He said he got the priests together, the seven priests that went before the Ark of the Covenant and the soldiers went before, hallelujah, the, the priests. And we find that they did this once again six days, one time around. On the seventh day, they would go around seven times. And I imagine that the inhabitants of Jericho, the Canaanites, the Amorites that were there saw them marching around. But the Bible lets us know none went in, none came out because Israel's reputation was out there. They had known what was on God's record as it related to Israel. What, what Israel had on their record that God brought them out of Egyptian bondage, brought them into the wilderness. They wandered for 40 years. They crossed the Red Sea and they crossed the Jordan and now they're at Jericho. How many know you just need one testimony to get your praise started? You need just one testimony that you can look back to and say to God, God, if you did it before, you can do it again. If you did it before, you can do it again. If you did it before, y'all ain't with me this morning. That's all right. If you did it, if, look at somebody say, if he did it before, he'll do it again. Oh, glory to God. I imagine the, the inhabitants of, of Jericho were saying, what in the world are they doing? What in the world are they doing marching around these walls? They should be prepared to fight, not prepared to march in the name of the Lord. What are they doing? It's the, the answer is very simple. They were obeying God. Oh, glory to God. Now, I know there's a halal praise. There's a toda praise. There's a ruah praise in the name of the Lord. There's a yada praise. I'm going to talk about those a little bit. Hallelujah, moving forward. But the fact of the matter is, one of the greatest praises that we can give to God is our obedience. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. What were they doing? They were obeying God. And the fact of the matter is, is that the, the enemy knew that they had a reputation of winning. They had a reputation of serving a God that would bring them out even when they were hard-headed. Oh, glory to God. How many know that God will bless you in your hard-headedness? But let me say something. Don't frustrate the grace of God. The scripture tells us that, but we have, we have, you have a reputation of winning. And some of you said, I didn't know that. Well, think of one thing that God brought you out of. Has he ever healed your body? Has he ever brought you out of a tight spot? Has he ever blessed you when the odds were against you? You felt like it was going to fall apart, and the Lord said, I got the power to put it together. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm on the winning side. Well, here, I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop here just for a moment to, to refer in the name of the Lord to the number seven, which is the number of completion. There's seven priests, seven trumpets, seven times. Seven priests, seven trumpets, seven times. Isn't it interesting that when... The Lord was leading. He gave Joshua the instructions, but he didn't tell Pastor Joshua to, in the name of the Lord to make this thing happen. He brought the people together, but the leadership was taken by the priests who were anointed musicians. Oh, glory to God. Men that were called in the name of the Lord to play this instrument called the ram's horn or the sofar in the name of the Lord. And they were anointed musicians that would lead this conquest for the Jericho wall to come down. Then there's seven trumpets. Why a trumpet? Why not a psaltery? Why, why not a harp? Why not a drum? But, 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 the, but the ram's horn, the trumpet in the name of the Lord was, was used as a point of jubilation or celebration or a signal or an alarm of war. Oh, glory to God. When the trumpet and the ram's horn was played, that means that God was getting ready to do something incredible. It was also would signify various Jewish holidays and, and, and obeisance to God. But we find that the Lord chooses seven priests, seven trumpets, and seven times to go around the wall. I'll get to the number seven in the name of the Lord maybe a little later on. But we must be, be mindful that anything that God starts, he's going to complete. 
They had to be consistent. Could you imagine what, the, what was going through the people's minds as they were marching around the wall? Mm, what is God going to do? Anybody ever been there? I, I don't see nothing happening. I don't see any possibilities of me winning this one. But Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. How many know you have to be consistent in what God has called you to do? Don't quit on the first day. Don't quit in the first year. Just know what God has told you. See, we have to get up in the morning when we pray to God and we have to say, I know what God said to me. Glory to God. Walk into the court and say, I know what God said to me. Walk into the banker's office. I know what God said to me. When you go on that interview, I know what God has said to me. Look at somebody and say, God said it. The, 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 the Jericho wall is an issue for Israel, but it's not going to be an issue for them anymore because God is going to work it out. They shut themselves in, and I, I want to remind you one more time that when the miracle, when you need a miracle, God must be involved in the name of the Lord. He is the only one that performs miracles. If you, if you can do it, it's not a miracle. But if you need God in your business, you need a miracle. If I'm talking to at least 10 people that, that want God in your business right now because you need a miracle, just put your hands together and give God a praise like, like it's already done. I, 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 wanna, I want to encourage those of you that are waiting on God that, that this event in Scripture was a demonstration of the utmost patience. Hebrews 6 and 12 says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them through faith and patience inherit the promises. You inherit the promises through patience. See, some people are slothful. They, they are lazy. They don't want to do what God says do. They, they don't give God no time. They, they don't spend no time in prayer, no time in praise and worship, no time in study. But the Word of God says, be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. Why do we know that, that patience was involved? Because they had to keep marching until they got the command from Joshua. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord is telling us one more time here just to be prepared to walk in and not to fight in the name of the Lord. There's some things in our lives where it requires us to walk it out. Oh, glory to God. You don't see anything happening, but Lord, I'm going to keep walking until I see something. I'm not going backwards in the name of the Lord. If I could borrow the song, I'm moving forward. I'm not going back, but I'm moving ahead. Oh, glory to God. How many want to move ahead in your life? Well, here's what helps us to understand why they were able to keep walking around the wall uninterrupted. Number one, they made it a priority. Number two, there was some anointed priest. There was a command from the man of God. There was a unity with the children of Israel where, where two or three are gathered together. Oh, glory to God. In his name is touching and agreeing. The Lord promised that he be in the midst of us. Glory to God. That's what I want Sunday morning. I want the Lord to be in the midst of us. Well, let me just pause. The scripture says that the Lord inhabits the praises of a shut mouth. Oh, the, the Lord inhabits in the name of the Lord the response of your cute, pretty, handsome self. Oh, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Let's see, see, God knows whether your praise is genuine or not. You can't fool God. You can fool your neighbor, but you can't fool God. Oh, glory, you can, you can fool the best of them, but you can't fool God. The reason why that this was going to be a slam dunk is because they were carrying that precious piece of furniture called the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, glory to God, that was, that was 
overlaid with gold and, 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 and the staves that was, car- that was carried was, were, was made out of, of sheet of wood and it was overlaid in gold. The lid was made out of gold. There was some angel. Thank you, Aranda. I appreciate that. Now they can see it. There were angels' wings that were cast over. In the middle was the mercy seat. And when the priest came in, in the name, he poured the blood of the animal on the mercy seat. They were carrying this vessel while they were walking around. How many know that obedience requires work? Oh, glory to God. Some of you wouldn't even want to carry your Bible around the wall. Now, I'm going to help you with this because there is some, some incredible revelation here. The presence of God is always a guarantee of victory. If God is there, you can't lose. This, this box represents the presence of the almighty God. We don't go to the Ark of the Covenant. We go straight to our royal priest, who is Jesus. But here, the presence of God was guaranteeing a victory. But we have to look at what was in the Ark. If you notice, the Ark could not be dragged. It could not be put on a buggy. It could not be put on a dolly. It could not be pushed. It, could be, it couldn't be dragged. It had to be carried. Oh, glory to God. Hang with me just a minute. Ark of the Covenant was, was being carried as the Israelites walked around the wall. Psalm 16, 10 and 11 says, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. The 11th verse says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In, the presence, in thy presence is fullness of joy. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Of joy. Tell me, when, when the trumpets blast, there's going to be some joy. It says, at thy right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Oh, glory to God. When you are in the presence of God, there is a promise of pleasure. How many feel good when you praise God? How many feel good when you worship God? He, he, he restores your joy for the week. He restores your joy for that day. But the question, go back to the Ark of the Covenant, around. I like that. What is in the box is, is, is what we need to pay attention to. In the box are the Ten Commandments. In the box is a pot of manna. In the box is Aaron's rod that budded. The Word of God was in the Ark of the Covenant. And the word of God can't be pushed. The word of God can't be shoved. It can't be dragged. But it must be carried in your heart. Or oh, you ought to praise the Lord in here. So in the box were God's, was God's word and God's instruction. In the box was a pot of manna. You remember when the manna fell from the sky when there was no food for Israel to eat. The pot of manna represents God's provision. When you are facing the enemy, the Lord has already provided a way for you to defeat the enemy. And some of y'all need to be praising God right now because the enemy that you face seems unconquerable. But Paul said it like this, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Aaron's rod that budded was a reminder that the Lord could take something dead and bring it back to life. It was a reminder of God's choice. People didn't want Moses, they didn't want Joshua at some point, or Aaron. And it was a reminder that God chooses who he wants to choose. Don't, let me say something to you. Everybody in this room, don't apologize for being called by God. Don't, don't apologize because God has put his anointing on your life. In the name of the Lord, when, when somebody questions your, your anointing, just, just say to them, you got to talk to God. You, you got to talk. You got to talk to God. So you got the Ten Commandments. You got, you got the pot of manna. You got Aaron's rod that budded. Joshua 6 and 3 says, And ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, go round about the city once. 
thou shalt do six days. I'm encouraging you this morning, don't deviate from God's instruction. God knows exactly what he's doing. Amen. Isaiah would tell us, Isaiah 55 and 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Stay out of God's business so he can get in your business. Oh, glory to God. Can I say that one more time? Stay out of, stay out of God's business so he can get in your business. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord, for as high as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. I know sometimes we want to put our two cents in when God is trying to work his plan in our lives. How many know what I'm talking about? You try to help God out. What do we look like helping God? What do we look like forcing God's hand? What do we look like giving God advice? The scripture says, and seven priests, the fourth verse of the sixth chapter says, and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horn, and the seventh day he shall come past the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. Oh, glory to God. The word blow here is the Hebrew word taqwa, which means to blast. Mm -mm -mm. It means to strike or to thrust as if you were using a weapon. How many know there's a such thing as a weapon called praise? Put your knife down. Put your gun down. Unball your fist and use the weapon of praise. So he, when they come past the city seven times, the priests are going to blow. Everyone say, Takwa. Learn some Hebrew this morning. I'm not done yet. Joshua 6 and 5 says, It shall come to pass that when they make a long blast, with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the, all the shout, shout with a great shout, and the, the wall of the city shall fall flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Great shout. The word great is the Hebrew word gadol, which means High praise, exceeding praise, mighty praise, loud praise. Don't be afraid to get loud. Don't be afraid to give that Shabbat praise to God. Because when you praise God loud, it will take your heart off of your problems. It will take your heart off of your circumstance. Oh, glory to God, the reason why the enemy beats a lot of Christians up because they have not unlocked the secret of what praise does. I'm not talking about just in church, but how many know how to praise God outside of these four walls? I would rather praise God with you, but I have learned how to praise him by myself. Oh, glory to God, can somebody say, I'm getting ready to shout? Well, the word shout here is the word ruah. Everyone say ruah. Ruah means, in the name of the Lord, to blow an alarm, to make a joyful noise. Oh, glory to God. To shout with a voice of triumph. As it says in Psalms 47 and 1, it says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Do you have any victory in your mouth? Oh, glory to God. You, you, you have to have some victory in your heart, but it should manifest itself in your mouth every now and then. What does your war cry sound like? Okay, we're going to get there in a minute. i got to preach a little bit longer. Oh, glory to God. But the, the most dynamic definition of the word ruah means to split the ear. Oh, glory to God. To split the ear. In other words, this praise is going to bust somebody's eardrum if you ain't in the flow. See, you, you, you sound loud to some people, and you really ain't loud. They're just nervous. That's all. Oh, glory to God. You're really not loud, but they haven't gotten to the point where they got a praise that sounds like anything. 
I'm not suggesting to you that in the name of the Lord that you be forced to praise God, but it's a good idea to praise God. He, he really doesn't, he really doesn't you know, uh, uh, need our praise, but we need to praise him. Oh, glory to God. So they were going to give him the, the shout, which is called ruah, to split the ears. And I want you to know that as I wind this down, that there is, this is no ordinary noise. Uh, oh, glory to God. It's no ordinary praise, but this is a praise that's going to bring down walls. How many are ready for your walls to come down? Oh, glory to God. So they go around, and as, and as I told you, they had to walk it out. And on last Sunday, in the name of the Lord, I told you that sometimes we have to keep walking until we see something. We have to obey God's instructions. And even as they were walking around, I could imagine in their natural man there was some discouragement. There may have been some question. What is God really trying to do? Are we going to overcome the Jericho wall. Well, I want to say to you right now, everyone in here is dealing with some kind of wall. Oh, glory to God. Some kind of an obstruction that's getting in the way of your destiny. Oh, glory to God. How many know that the enemy is trying to stop your destiny? You've shown him what's on the inside of you. You've shown him how you bounce back. You've shown him how we multiply. We don't die, but we multiply. Oh, glory to God. He already had shown himself to Israel, but there's a song that says, Lord, show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Show yourself awesome in the midst of the storm. So they had to keep on marching, but the Lord's words were already out. Let me remind you, the Lord said to Joshua, see. He said, I've given unto thy hand. I want to tell some of you right now that what you face, God has given you the power. He's given you the wherewithal. He's given you the spiritual equipment and the fortitude to come out on top. I want to know, is there anybody in here that you want to accept what God has given to you? Oh, glory to God. You might say, where is the power? As a, as a symbol of faith and as an act of faith, just look at your hand and say, it's in my hand. Oh, glory to God. I don't have to look for it. it it's in my hand. I don't have to beg for it. It's in my hand. Oh, glory to God. So ask your neighbor, why are you defeated when it's in your hand? Why are you giving up when God said it's in your hand? He said, I've given it to you and I've given you the power to overcome all of your enemies. For the, the Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, let me tell you something. The Lord will deal with your flesh and blood. Let me tell I'm talking about the person. He'll, he'll deal with them. The reason why I know that, because he says, I'm not only going to put the power in your hand, but I'm going to give you the king. Oh, glory to God. Uh, I'm going to give you the king of Jericho, and I'm going to give you the mighty men of of valor. Oh, glory to God. You think that the odds are against you, but the odds are really against the devil. Oh, glory to God. Because one in God is the majority. Oh, glory to God. I just want to know if we can unify right now and give God some praise like the wall is coming down. I, I, I don't know what the name of your wall is. I don't know what the name of your wall is, but I want you to take a few minutes, name your wall, and begin to let the Lord know, I'm getting ready to shout. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I, 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 don't, I don't want you to get excited too fast, because as quickly as you get this word, the enemy will try to snatch it out of your heart. And I come to tell you, as you are walking it out, you are waiting on God. As you are walking it out, you remember what he said. As you are walking it out, you're saying, Lord, I want to follow your instructions. I'm going to want to follow the Lord's instructions. Don't get discouraged when you're waiting it out because the scripture says, 
Psalms tells us, Psalms 40, I waited patiently for the Lord. It's something about when you wait on God for something. Let me tell you why he makes you wait. Because when you're waiting and you don't give up and your faith takes you through your process. We got to slap the devil with this one. When your faith, Mother Bell, takes you through the process. And you don't hold up the white flag, but you hold up the bloodstained banner. When, when, when your faith is, is going through the bumps and the potholes in Buffalo in the road. When, when, when your faith is not shook by logic and it's not shook by philosophy and it's not shook by what people say and it's not shook by what you see on the news and it's not shook by who's in control right now. I'm telling you, Donald Trump will never shake my faith. Oh, glory to God, because I know who's in control in the name of the Lord. What keeps you moving in your process? you got to remind yourself who got you out there in the first place. Oh, glory to God, you have to remind yourself that the God I serve is sovereign. The God I serve is all-knowing. The God I serve is all-powerful. The God I serve fills all space. Ark of the Covenant was with them. That gave them the encouragement to keep on walking. When his presence is with you, don't stop until he tells you. Oh, glory to God. Don't hit pause until he tells you to. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. We have to be mindful. We've heard it time and time again, but it's the truth. God's delay is not his denial. Waiting on God brings you to the next dimension of your faith. God is saying, you can wait this one out because I believe you won't quit. I believe in you enough that you won't give up. Nobody in here better give up. Because if you give up, you're stunting your own destiny. But how many know that your, your faith has to be tenacious? Your faith has to bank on what the word of God has already Oh, glory to God, Joshua had to see. See, you have to see yourself coming out before you come out. Matter of fact, you have to talk like this, Sister Austin. You have to talk like this. I'm already out. I'm just going through my process. I, I, I'm already out. Oh, glory to God. See, some people think, you know, you're coming out, but your faith says, I'm already out. Oh, come on. Do your hand like this. Say, I'm already out. Here's your problem. I'm already out. Oh, glory to God. It's, it's Monday. I'm already out. Tuesday, I'm, al I'm, just, I'm just waiting on God. I'm already out. I'm already out. But we see here, the consistency of Israel. The blessing was on the seventh day. Jericho would have hoped, the inhabitants of Jericho would have hoped that they would just have given up and stopped. The enemy wants to stop you in the middle and he wants you to go back. And we have to have enough faith to know that God's word is locked in. Amen. How many got a praise that says his word is locked in? Amen. We're going to get ready to bring the wall down. Let me go to Hebrews 11, 27 and 30. By faith, he forsook Egypt. He was 11 and 27 through 30. Not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. The hall, or the, the hall of faith includes this story. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed.
pass through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do or drown. By faith, somebody say by faith, by faith. the walls of Jericho fell down. Amen. After, somebody say after. after. See, it wasn't going to work if they did it on the fifth day or the fourth day. They had to wait to the seventh day. How many know you got to wait until your change comes? You got to wait till God gives you your next move. They compassed about the city seven days. But we have to have enough faith before we get to the wall coming down. We have to take, we have to have enough faith to take the first step. Are you willing to take the first step? On Wednesday night, with no instruction from me, as we were ministering, the people started getting up and walking around the wall. I want you to help me create this. Before you take that step, you got to see your wall coming down. It ain't no sense in shouting until we know what God has said to us. How many believe your wall's coming down? Now, now, if you don't have any walls, this message is not for you. If you never had a wall, this message is not for you. If you have never been through a situation where you had to face an obstacle, this message is not for you. If you're not facing anything now, let me just go down the list. Personal, family, job, parenting, business, ministry, spirituality, money. Did I hit yours yet? Amen. Health. Amen. Emotion. Yes. Mind. Yes. Spirit. Yes. Soul. Yes. Mom and them. I hope I hit yours. I want you to take a step of faith this morning. Amen. This church is big enough for us to march. Amen. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. This church is big enough for us to march. But before we do, this ain't for everybody. I know it's not for everybody. But before we do, you have to see the wall coming down. Glory. You have to see that you have to wait on it to come down. You have to believe that God takes impossibilities and makes them possible. This was an illogical battle strategy. It made no sense. Shouting, blowing horns, doesn't make walls come down. The archaeologists know that that wall fell. They just don't know how. They are not buying into the how. I heard one archaeologist say, well, you know, the frequency of the shout probably brought it down. Well, thank God. <laughs> but we know that's what brought it down. This message, we must be engaged with God to the extent that we know that faith, the wall coming down starts with your faith. We're on the seventh day. I ain't going to make you walk around six times. We're on the seventh day. How many are ready to see it come down? In the spirit. In the spirit realm, you have to see it.
coming down. I mean, before you get moving, you have to know what God said. He told Joshua, see, I've given you Jericho. Tell your neighbor, God has already given it to you. What's important is that you get in your mind and your spirit what you want to see come down. What is in your way, if you don't go through it, your destiny is going to be held up. You won't go any further. Some of us haven't gone any further because we're dealing with walls from five years ago, ten years ago, walls in our past. Name your wall. Get ready to deal with it. Seven times, seven days, one time around. At Joshua's command, the people were going to shout. Mm -mm -mm. The ark was moving in this journey. Y'all got some warfare music? This is going to be on your response. It depends on how much faith you, want, you have to deal with it. It may seem ridiculous to you, but it probably seemed ridiculous to Joshua, but he believed God. When you have the faith, I want you to find a place in the perimeter of this church and walk around. Try to be as quiet as you can. But as you see what God is getting ready to do, get ready to shout. Come on. Just get in these aisles right now and just start walking. Try to be as quiet as you can. Come on. Just start walking. Not up the aisle, around the perimeter of the church. Come on.